worthy to be praised, worthy to be adored, worthy to be magnified. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Shekinah glory, the omnipotent, omnipresence, omnipresence, God, the lover of our soul, our defender, the gracious God. Can you just lift up your voice and worship Him? Exalt His holy name. Let us magnify His holy name. Oh, my riba to Gashem Tali Mama. Kali Brano Gazan Tali. Maso Kala Brani Gashem Tali. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Beloved, like I did mention to those in first and second service, all the things that God created have ears and can hear. Praise the Lord. Even death can hear. And that was why when Jesus stood at the tomb of Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible says he that was dead came what? Came forth. His destiny came back alive. And Ezekiel 37, when God took prophet Ezekiel and asked, if this dry bone can live again, he said prophesy. And the destiny, the Bible says it was a great army. Their destiny came back to life. I want you to lift up your two hands this morning. And I want you to just take two prayer points very quickly and say, Father, let my destiny hear your voice. Oh God, my maker, let my destiny hear your voice. Can you go ahead and touch it, Almighty God? That the, that the destiny that God has given to you will hear the voice of God, even as God will command it to fruitfulness, even as God will command your destiny to fulfillment. Let your destiny hear the voice of God. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Masupa la brando kasanta li mama zavale mato gashenteli kariba to kasanta li. Thank you, Mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Lift up your two and say, Father, every power that wants to destroy my destiny, oh God, my Father, deliver me from their hand. Can you go ahead and touch the Almighty God? That every power that wants to destroy your destiny, God will deliver you from their hand. In the name of Jesus. Ramato Gabrande Casontalia. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus, most wonderful name, we are praying. I just want to say a better amen. amen. Let's go before the Almighty God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. I you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy, you are worthy to be praised. I say, You are worthy to, to be praised. I will my. You are worthy to be praised. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Most we say, yes, yes you, you are, are the Lord. Lord. I say, Most yes, you are. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Heavenly Father, it's your grace that makes the difference. Thank you for you are a gracious God. Thank you for you will have mercy on who you will have mercy. And you'll be gracious on who you will be gracious. That you will say your name be exalted this hour in the name of Jesus. Thank you for what you did in the first service. Thank you for what you did in the second service. Come for what you are set to do right now. 
Lord, we say may your name be a glorified in the name of Jesus. Daddy, for every destiny represented here this hour, Lord, let them hear your voice in the name of Jesus. Lord, command our destiny to fulfillment in the name of Jesus. And Lord God Almighty, we are asking at this hour, O oh God, that every agent of destruction assigned from whatever quarter to destroy our destinies, Lord, we ask, all right, destroy them in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, before we leave you at this hour, may we find grace. Lord, may we find grace. Lord, may we find grace. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I just want to say a louder Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you are excited to be in his presence, put your hands together for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen and amen and amen. Let's be seated in his presence as we continue from where we stop in the second service. The mysteries of differentiating grace. What do I call it? But before we go into the world, let us not forget that tomorrow morning is continuation of Good Morning Holy Spirit. Uh, we're going to be talking about the fire of grace. My prayer is that all of us will be carrier of the fire of his grace. If you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. And also by the special grace of God, next Sunday, we'll be having a guest minister in our midst, in person of the pastor in charge of youth province, one of Lagos, Pastor B.C. Akonde. Let's put our hand to that for Jesus. He's going to be in the house next Sunday. If Jesus tarry, it is coming. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 to 9. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 to 9. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to you all, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. He made known unto me what? The mystery. May God make that mystery known unto us. As I wrote afore a few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge, or when ye read rather, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentile the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. I take one more Bible reading which is Ephesians 1 7. Ephesians 1 7 says, In whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. Beloved, there is what is called differentiating grace, and that is what is known as the mystery of grace. Apostle Paul was given a revelation of the mystery of grace and that enables him to know the dispensation of grace and I want to tell us this morning 
that you and I, we are in the dispensation of grace. And this grace is bestowed upon us by the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Grace is the container of the riches of redemption. By the reason of redemption, by the reason of the blood that was shed on Calvary, every child of God, every believer is entitled to certain blessings. We are entitled to certain packages. But the truth is that these packages, these blessings are embedded in grace. They are contained in grace. And that's why we say grace is the container of the riches of redemption. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Until you allow grace to fill you up, your inadequacies will expose you. Until you allow grace to fill you up, whatever inadequacy in you will be exposed. But when grace fills you up, every of your limitations are covered. That is the mystery of grace. You can see Apostle Paul saying, he is the least of all saints, yet he was the chief apostle. Praise the Lord. So that the Bible says that the Lord wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. Praise the Lord. Even though God was able to do that in the life of Paul, Paul understood the mystery of grace. He said he is the least of all the saints. The least of all the saints. Yet the almighty God wrought mighty works through him that he became an amazing wonder in his generation. I am praying for every one of us today that God will grant unto us the revelation and the understanding of the mystery of grace. If you are able to say a louder amen. I say if you are able to say a louder amen. amen. Beloved, grace is immeasurable. Grace is what? And that is why God can multiply his grace upon his people. And I am praying for somebody listening to me today that God will multiply his grace upon you. Yeah. Beloved, like I mentioned in the second service, grace is a treasure that all of us must look for and find. Because until you find grace, you cannot manifest grace. And that's why it takes God to bestow grace upon any man. Why? Number one, God is sovereign. God is what? Sovereign. And because he's sovereign, you cannot query him and you cannot question him. Because God is sovereign, he does whatever he pleases. If, because God is suffering, he can decide to hate one and love one. According to Romans chapter 9, verse 13 to 16, you will discover that Jacob found grace not because of his work, not because of, his, of, of, of the quality of his character, but because God is suffering, God decides who he will show, who, who he will give grace, and whom he will not give grace. And so Jacob found grace, and Esau was hated. Why? Because God is sovereign. Can I pray only one prayer for you? In the sovereignty of God, God will prefer you in grace than any other person. If I say them and say it loud and clear. To find grace, because grace distinguish. You see, God inspire you to do what ordinarily you think you cannot be able to do. Like I've always said here, I've always asked myself the question, who asks 
Solomon to go and offer a thousand offering. According to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 1 to 13. Who asked him? Who asked him? He carried out that act. And before you know what was happening, God manifested the mystery of grace in his life. And he stood out among the kings before him. The kings during his time and evil kings after him. Praise the Lord. Because he found grace. Because he was inspired to do what no man has ever done. And because God will only have a justification for whatever he does, he decided to bless Solomon more than every other person. Why? He found grace. I pray for you today. God will grant you divine inspiration. If you are saying it, say it loud and clear. Beloved, talking about the mystery of grace, God can also instigate you. God can do what? I talked about inspiration before. Am I correct? Now, to be instigated is to be pushed. God will push you. God will push you to do something that ordinarily people will ask, how come, how did he do it? Anytime I read that story in the book of Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 20, I ask two questions. How many questions? Hello? How many questions? Question number one. What did Jesus went to do at the tomb? <laughs> Do you know that it was at the tomb that he found the madman of Gadare? Am I correct? Hello, are you with me, sir? What did Jesus, what did he go to do at that tomb? That's number one question. Number two question. It was written that this madman, <laughs> he was mad, madman of madmen. Because they could not bind him. Hello? They could not do what? They could not bind him. He's not even with shame. But the Bible says, if you read that story, in that Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 20, that when he saw Jesus, he ran to him and worshipped him. How can? Was he not supposed to be mad? Hello? Is somebody with me? It's because God has ordained that that madman will find grace to be called a great evangelist. And so you can't explain it. Nobody can explain grace. Apostle Paul could not explain how he became what he was. And that's why he answered everyone, I am what I am. By what? By the grace of God. I am what I am. Why? Grace qualified the unqualified. I am praying for you today. In this season of grace, in this season of differentiating grace, grace will locate you. Grace will rub upon you. Grace will fill you. What may thought you can never become, you will become. What may thought can never happen in your life, will happen in your life. If you are not going to say a louder amen. amen. Still talking about the mystery of grace. When you study Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1 to 8, you ask yourself a question. Nehemiah was a house boy. He was what? A house boy. But suddenly, he became a commander to kings. Why? He obtained a letter from a king and went to other kings and they obeyed whatever he asked them to do. Yet, he was a house boy. A cup bearer. A cup bearer became a builder. A cup bearer became a governor. That is the mystery of grace. I am praying for you here today. In that name, there's a woman brought that name. 
all those that have been looking down on you, they will soon look up to you. If you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. All those that have been looking down on you, they will look up to you. If you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. That is why there is no sacrifice, there is no effort that can be too much for any man to pay to obtain grace. Because you begin to experience grace after you have found grace. The question is, how can I find grace? How can I find grace? Number one, I told those that were in first service, humility. And I really want to talk about humility this service. You know why? The worst thing that can happen to a destiny is to be full of pride. And I'm going to tell you this morning how you can know that you have pride. If you read James chapter 4 verse 6, James chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible says, but he giveth what? More grace. Wherefore he said, God resisted who? The proud. But give what? Grace unto the humble. Whatever may be the mystery of grace, one thing that is required from you and I is humility. Why? Grace is an entitlement of humble people. Grace is what? Entitlement of who? Humble people. Grace is always looking for humble people. Humble people do not look for grace, but grace look for them. Jesus himself epitomized humility. And that's why in Philippians chapter 2, 9 and 10, because he humbled himself, the Bible says that Lord gave him a name that is above every other name. Beloved, what is humility? Humility is the acknowledgement of your weakness. Humility is acknowledgement of your incompetence. Humility is acknowledgement of your foolishness. Humility is acknowledgement of your inability. Humility is you submitting willingly to God. Hello? Humility is you doing what? Submitting how? Willingly to God. Without anybody cajoling you, without anybody compelling you, without anybody forcing you, you humble yourself in the presence of God. That is humility. What is opposite of humility? The opposite of humility is pride. Opposite of humility is what? Pride. How do you know you are proud? You are proud when you become uncorrectable. Hello? If nobody can correct you, if nobody can give you instruction, then you know you have what? Pride. Those that are proud they equate themselves to every authority they are supposed to be under. They look at the authority and say, who are you? They can even look at the pastor and say, my friend, who do you think you are? Or you look at the head of your department and say, if not for, if not for rain that fair, that combine the goats. Hello? I don't know what I'm talking about. Pride. The moment you can trace any, any sign of pride in you, sir, know that grace is far from you. But the moment you can sense humility, know that you are going to become an embodiment of grace. Can you stand on your feet and pray just one prayer very quickly? Lift up your two hands. And say, Father, you can do better. Say, Father, Every pride in me that want to destroy me. 
every pride in me that will not allow me to become what you have ordained for me. Oh God, my Father, take them away. Can you go ahead and touch it, Almighty God? Can you ask the Lord to take them away from you? Ah, Mariba to Gajian Tali, Mama Kasan Tali, Skele Kasunta Bali, Mama Kasan Tali, Mama Zebrande Kasun Tali, Mama Kasan Tali. In Jesus, Almighty name, we are praying. Be seated. Proud people compare themselves and give themselves the mark. I am better than him. I am what? Better than him. I am better than her. Any time, any day, anything come into your heart and you tell yourself in comparison that you are better than somebody, no sir, no man, that is a sign that you have pride in you. And the Bible says, God resists the proud. And don't forget that only God can give grace. And he can only give it to the humble. And so when there is pride in you, rather than God giving you grace, he resists you. He keeps you at bay. That's why you must run away from pride. Pride is distorting. In the dispensation of grace, you must be clothed with humility. That is why with all the exploit of Apostle Paul, he referred to himself as the least of all saints. Look at our Father in the law. Look at humility. Look at what God is doing through him. Many a time you take a look at him, you cannot fathom. How can? How is it possible? What this thing God? How can? What? What? How did he? How did he get there? Yeah. Each of your two hands, say, Father, please clothe me with humility. I am nothing before you. I am nothing before you, Lord. I am nothing before you. Oh God of heaven, I am nothing before you. Can you tell God repeatedly that you are nothing, you are nothing, you are nothing. Whatever you have, you are nothing, you are nothing. As far as God is concerned, thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. So the one that desire the grace of God must long for humility. And when God clothes you with humility, there will not be any excuse for you not to be clothed with grace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The humble are ready to take correction. The humble are ready to take instruction. The humble are ready to submit under authority. The humble run away from argument. You give them order, they say, yes, sir. I pray, God Almighty, we clothe us with humility in the name of Jesus. Another hindrance to grace is self. Is what? Self must die for grace to fill us. I repeat, what must that? Self. Self. That's why when you are fond of saying, I, 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 I. Just like Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel chapter 4. He said, is this not the kingdom that, that I, have, I have built by my self, by my power? Self must die. What must die? I say, what must die? Self must die. Unless you allow self to die, you cannot be filled with grace. And until you are filled with grace, you cannot manifest the mysteries of grace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. And then number three, how to assess this grace? is search the word and practice the word. Two things. What did I say? Search the word and what? And practice the word. Do you know why? 
grace multiplied by knowledge. How does grace multiply? By knowledge. By knowledge. That's why the more of the word of God you have in you, the more of grace you manifest. The more of God you have in you, the more of grace you manifest. You must search the word and practice the word. You must engage the word of God. The moment you are able to engage the word of God, God multiply his grace upon you. And my prayer for somebody here this morning is that all the days of your life, you will never lack knowledge. For the Bible says, my people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. So where grace is available, there is no destruction. Grace, rescue from destruction. So grace had the same quality with knowledge. Knowledge, rescue from destruction. You pay dearly for ignorance. In one of the good man Holy Spirit, I was giving a testimony of how I pay dearly for ignorance. One of my car, you are just supposed to touch the door and it will open on its own. Praise the Lord. And I will touch, it will not open. I would press and open the boot. It will not open. So I began to make calls. And they now said they have found somebody in, uh, what do you call it? Ladipo. That he will come to the house to do it. The guy came. He said, let us discuss price. Let's all shout hallelujah. Let us go. I'm telling you the, the destruction of ignorance. He said, price. I said, how much? I said, 20,000. I said, do the work first. Let me even see. The guy went around, went around. I said, there's nothing wrong with the car. Hello? Nothing what? Wrong with the car. He said, there is a button. If that button is switched off, it reduces the car to manual. When the button is switched off, he brought the car to what? Automatic. So you can just touch the door, the door will open. You can just press the button, the boot will open. And suddenly he on the switch. Praise the Lord. And boot open. Touch the door, door open. And I said, Oh, I will give you 10,000. <laughs> Let somebody shout hallelujah. I said, Let somebody shout hallelujah. The worst of them was my boots. Who will not open when I press the, 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 the remote control? I'll have to support with hand. And he said, there's nothing wrong with it. Another 20,000. Praise the Lord. He just pressed a button. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. He pressed the button. The boot opened on his own. And I pray for you, sir. You will not be destroyed by ignorance. Yeah. Brethren, many of us are children of God, but we are not exploiting the word of God. We need to repent. We need to do what? A lot of provision God has made for you and I. But we deny ourselves access to them because we fail to do what we are supposed to do. Let me give you one more and then we rise up to pray. This one I also mentioned in the second service. Work in the company of gracious people. Work in the company of what? Gracious people. I will still talk about this in. Uh, I will still talk about this more in one of the good, good morning Holy Spirit. When we talk about you working in the company of gracious people, remember the Bible says that you have the right to walk into the labor of people. Am I correct? Hello? Am I correct? When you read the book of Exodus, you discover that God took the spirit that was upon Moses and placed it on 70 elders. Hello? Before then, Moses went to the mountain 
and spent 40 days and 40 nights. Am I correct? Am I correct? Now, Moses was the one that labored for the grace. Hmm. But the 70 elders, they never followed Moses to the mountain. Yet, because they were in company of Moses, God took the grace that was upon Moses and placed it upon the 70 elders. What am I trying to say? When you are in the company of those that are gracious, the grace they carry rubs upon you. For instance, if you are looking for anything, for instance, there is a grace for it. If you see somebody that God has given that thing, and you are in the company of that fellow, sooner or later, you are going to have it. It's a mystery. And that's why I encourage every one of us, sir, for every kind of grace you want to manifest, there is somebody God has released it to. That's why we talk about mentorship. That's why we talk about mentoring. Mentoring has to do with somebody that has been enabled with grace. Transferring that grace to you by guiding you. And by you tapping into that grace. My prayer for somebody here today is that in that name that's above every brother name, grace of God will be noticed in your life. Stand on your feet. Did you get anything at all? Are you sure? You want to take three prayer points and then we close. Three prayer points. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can you wave your hand and just say, Father, I thank you. Thank you for this grace. Thank you for the work of grace. Thank you for the mystery of grace. Thank you, O oh God, for the enablement to assess grace. Just go ahead and appreciate him. Just go ahead and appreciate him. Just go ahead and appreciate him. Masupa la masanta brande kasantali. Oh, masanta la brande kasantali. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You know what happened? When you walk in the company of those that are found grace, you find those that will enhance your destiny. You find those that will help you in life. Everybody needs somebody that will enhance his or her destiny. Lift up your two hands to heaven and say, Father, say, Father, though that we enhance my destiny, oh God, my Father, let me find them and let me find them early. Let me find them and let me find them early. Though that you have bestowed grace upon, great that I need for my greatness, great that I need to go forward, great that I need to be prosperous, great that I need to be great, though that you have bestowed them upon, Lord, let me find them, though that we enhance my destiny, let me find them, and let me find them early. Can you open your mouth and talk to the Almighty God? That you will find those that will enhance your destiny, those that God has bestowed grace upon, you will find them, and you will find them early. Masuka la brande kasantali, gobale kazunta blande kasantali Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now lift up those hands and say, Father, all the days of my life, can you say loud and clear, all the days of my life, keep me humble. Can you go ahead and pray that prayer? Ask God to keep you humble all the days of your life. Let there be no single day that pride will ever take over. That pride will ever take over. That pride will ever take over. Pride in the spirit of Lucifer. <laughs> Kalima Kasanta. The spirit of Lucifer will not have manifestation in your life. Open your mouth and talk to your mighty God. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Brethren, I want to beg every one of us here in this service. This prayer, we didn't pray it in first service. We did not pray it in second service. God knows those of us that will be here. And he knows what he wants to do in this third service. I just want you to lift up your two hands. Brethren, 
The Bible says God resists the proud. What can you do when God began to resist you? You can't do anything. You can't become anything. But the Bible says, the same Bible that says he resists the proud, he says he gives grace to who? The humble. He gives grace to the humble. Meaning, if the riches of redemption is embedded in grace, with humility, you assess all the blessing of redemption. So I want you to lift up your two hands and say, Father, say, Father, make me a candidate of humility. Let the garment of humility be upon me. Let humility be noticed in my life. Everywhere I go, it doesn't matter the kind of blessing that you give to me. It doesn't matter the kind of position I occupy. Lord, keep me humble. Keep me humble. Brother, can you pray for humility? Can you ask God to keep you humble? No matter your talent, no matter your gifts, no matter the resources, no matter how, how, how endowed you are, ask God to clothe you with humility. With humility. With humility. With humility. No matter the position you occupy, ask God to clothe you with humility. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus mighty name we are praying finally before we take the last prayer point I don't know who is here that need grace is there anybody you need grace I believe everybody should need grace or is there anybody here that does not need grace if you need grace let me see your hand but do you know what mercy precedes grace what precedes grace mercy you must obtain mercy first before grace. And that is why the only way you can demonstrate humility is for you to acknowledge who you are. If you are living in sin and the Bible says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy labor, I will give you rest. And you remain there and you know you are living in sin. Who are you? You are proud. And God will be the one fighting you. God will be the one resisting you. But when you humble yourself before him, if Apostle can say, I am the least of all the saints, at another place, he says, I am the chief of all sinners. Yet, he became chief of all the apostles. You may be a sinner today, but you may not die a sinner. If only you will embrace mercy. All eyes closed before the last prayer point. I want to give you that opportunity. You want the mercy so that you can get grace. So that God can give you grace. You are the only one to lift up your right hand and I pray with you. You want the mercy of God? God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Another person. Another person. God bless you, my sister. Another person. Another person. Another person. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my mommy. God bless you. God bless you. All shall set us. I tell to them there's somebody else there in the middle. If you don't mind, can you please just come to the altar? It's just signs of humility. Come out, submit yourself before your maker, before your creator. Can you please come? Can you please come? All of us that have raised our hand, please come, please come, please come, please come, please come, please come. Please come. Please come. Any other person? I will count one to three. If you are not coming, that means you want to remain where you are. But let me tell you this, sir. Let me tell you this, man. One thing I want you to know is this. It is possible for you to be born again before and you have gone back to sin. You can come back to him now and rededicate your life. It's this sign of humility. But if you are pretending before him, it's pride and the end is destruction. And so I don't want anybody here destroyed. I'll count one to three fast. If you want to come, come and join them. And those of us at the other time, don't begin to ask him for only mercy. Just say, Lord, have mercy. You are rich in mercy. One. I'll count one, two, three. If you are coming, can you come and join them? Either you want to rededicate your life or you want to surrender genuinely. Two. Two. Another person. Another person. Another person. Another person. Thank you, Jesus. Two. Before I finish praying, thank you, Lord. Mighty and everlasting Father, I don't want to thank you for the life of these your children. Lord, thank you, O oh God, for the riches of redemption. 
that are contained in grace. And thank you, O oh God, for the doors through which grace can be accessed. That the word of it is what your children are doing here, O oh God. They have acknowledged you as their pastor and savior, and they have confessed with their mouth their sins. Lord, please have mercy. Lord, please forgive. Please make grace available. That from today, grace to live righteous, grace to live holy, grace to please you all the days of their life. Lord, grant to them in the name of Jesus. And as from today, oh God, whatever the agenda of the devil concerning them, Lord, destroy. Lord, at your returning, let them reign with you. Thank you, mighty Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. Can you kindly follow that, my sister, one minute, and then you will join us back? The rest of all, lift up your two hands for the last prayer point. For the last prayer point. Say, Father, the grace to become what you have ordained me to be. The grace to become what you have destined me to be. The grace to achieve all that I desire to accomplish. Oh, God, my Father, or release them to me now. Can you go ahead and talk to the Almighty God? The choir sang that there are blessings to be released. There are blessings to be released. Greatest of them all is that grace. That grace. That grace to fulfill your destiny. That grace to become who God has ordained you to be. That grace to, 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 to accomplish your heart desires. Can you go ahead and ask for it? Ask the Lord to release it to you now. Yes, yes, yes. Let God release that grace to you. Thank you, my chief father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we are praying. Mighty and everlasting father, I pray for everyone under the influence of my voice, including myself. Baba, please clothe us with humility. Every traces of pride that will lead to destruction in our life. Lord, approve them violently in the name of Jesus. Mighty and everlasting Father, we ask this day, grace to become who you have ordained us to be. Grace to fulfill our destiny. Grace to accomplish our heart desires. Lord, let that be massive and pouring upon us today in the name of Jesus. As we live here today, everywhere we go, let grace be noticed upon our life. Lord, let grace be noticed upon our life. Thank you, mighty Father. Bless every that in the for we pray in Jesus' name. Three powerful, we want to go.